Okay, so I went ahead after the last session and I couldn't wait and I completed the helmet pretty much. Um, I went, we were working on this uh, detail on the side in the last session and I actually restarted it the next day and I used a disc with more segments so I didn't have to cut in extra segments. Um, just spent a bit of time thinking about how many segments I'd need so it matched um, more correctly from the start so I could add this little inset a little more uh, cleanly, a little more evenly. It took a bit of work to get this right because um, obviously I didn't have any guide images so I had to just use reference images and uh, pretty happy with the way it came out. Just had to get everything to kind of uh, match and not intersect. I just tried to make sure that things didn't intersect. I've taken a bit of creative license with this. Um, you know, making sure that, let me just turn on, let's see, turn on isopalms. Trying to keep it as clean as possible. Um, certain things are actually, you know, this, this is actually one object, so I had to get the edge flow looking right. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it, just preview that, I think it came out pretty well. It's very clean. It should unwrap pretty well. And I did have to go in with the brush tool on the actual helmet and just push in these edges just to sort of match, just to sort of make sure that this edge was lined up. And I grabbed the brush tool on the other side that was just a case of, um, where am I, just grab the point mode, just grabbing the brush tool, MC, and just make it a bit smaller, just using HB, and just brushing these in, just to sort of, it was pretty, um, pretty easy to do, making sure I was in uh, subdivision surface, and then just brushing these in, like that, just to line everything up, because I think it's really important that this um, this lines up really well. And the brush is great for this because I don't want to go in and start messing up all of that great work that I did with the subdivision with the um, shrink wrap and start adding lumps and bumps. So the brush tool in smear mode is great just to be able to sort of uh, get the sort of soft style selection and not add unnecessary lumps and bumps. So so I finished off this piece, moved those into place, and um, that was pretty much it. I also just went through and um, cleaned up the visor as well. You can see I just, rather than just deleting polygons and leaving it jaggedy edge inside here, I just made that a little cleaner. Uh, but overall, that's that's pretty much done. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do what I would normally do once a, once a, a model's finished, um, go through in the object panel and clean it up, get it ready for unwrapping, and then I'm going to shoot it across to Rhizom. I'm a bit rusty in Rhizom, but um, shouldn't be too hard to pick it up again and uh, and unwrap it. So we'll um, we'll give that a go, huh? I think it's looking looking okay. I did also work on the chest plate this week, um, and that came out pretty well. There's a few little details in there that I, I had a look around on for 3D models of the chest plate, and I didn't see really any of them that I could find that had any of this detail in here, um, and also this sort of more detailed side. It was quite tricky to get that to to work without any any proper guide images, but um, I noticed from watching the show that this kind of comes in around here like this, and there's kind of a triangle up there, so that was a bit fiddly. But I think once I add materials to that, that should actually look quite good. Now we're not going to see the uh, the uh, abdominal plate because I'm not going to go that that low. So I'm not doing that, but I do have to do the shoulder plates. Um, 
Let's come back to the helmet. Hey, Triumph. YouTube, all right. That um, Mando that you've been working on, looking great, mate. Um, I did actually, before we do this, I did actually, um, I'm, I'm a, a dabbler in ZBrush and I do know the basics, but I, I'm in and out of it so irregularly that I, I forget how to do stuff. And the new version has, um, well, the, not the most recent version, but I think it what's 2021, um, has um, cloth. So what I did was um, I grabbed a demo soldier um, from ZBrush and he was massive, the, 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 the demo soldier. Just use Go Z, um, and in ZBrush, I just used, um, I just sort of scaled him down to try and make him a little bit more like um, the the actual Mandalorian's body shape, just using the brush tool. Um, and then I duplicated that to create the um, uh, flak vest. I know all the terms now because I've been looking up what these are called. So there's a flak vest that he wears underneath the shirt or on top of the shirt and it comes up kind of like this polar neck but it has a lot of wrinkles in it and luckily in the um uh in some of the show he takes off his helmet so i can see this more detail so i've got the flak vest and i've also done a quick um just a quick shape for the cape so what i'm going to do um not today but i'm going to i'm going to take this back across to rise him uh, to ZBrush, excuse me, and I'm going to play around with the cloth settings, which I think would be great practice for me. So I, I mean, I'd really like to get this cape looking really sweet using cloth, and also you know, a little bit of detail in the flak vest. And then you've got the chest plate on top, the shoulder plates, and I'm, I wanted to just, I was going to just do the helmet and render that, but I thought, it wouldn't it be good if we could, you know, have some, um, have some better angles and you know, maybe just do it from the just turn off this one just do it from here i don't want to be looking up into the helmet um, but just be able to have some better angles and just take some do some shots like this where you can see a little bit of the detail maybe the you know the mud horn on the on the shoulder plate and i think that'll actually um uh, i think a lot more fun and it give me some much nicer final images. And I thought it was going to be a really good way to practice using some cloth in ZBrush as well. So I'm kind of forcing myself to go across there and practice it. So it's as much for practice as it is for giving me not just a free floating helmet, but actually it's, you know, on a on an actual person. Now I'm not going to stream that, man, because um <laughs> because I'm going to be learning how to do it too. So that stream would be extremely dull that i'd be streaming you'd be i'd be streaming myself and you'd be watching me watching tutorials so um but i will you know i'll i'll tweet out my progress and, and i don't even know it could be a train wreck it might not work the way i i'd hoped but i really do need practice at doing at least basic clothing and cloth and stuff like that um so i just think it's going to be good practice that actual cape um it wraps around the front here under the neck it's quite bunched up around you probably won't see too much of the flak vest but you do see a little bit it wraps around here and this part comes in and pins underneath so and the chest plate sits in here so it should be fun i think it'll look good so it's a nice change from the motorbike anyway which i'll get done eventually yeah yeah um, I've just been watching a few tutorials on, on YouTube, you know. Um, there's some bloody brilliant ZBrush artists out there and just watching a few of those. So I I kind of got the basics of how it works. Um, I just want to give it a go. I don't have Marvelous Designer, but I do have ZBrush, so I'll just give that a try. But for now, I thought it's probably going to be good to just um, keep going ahead with the helmet and... Um, clean this up so i'm just going to save this save incremental clean this up ready for unwrapping 
because obviously I've got things under subdivision. I've got things in symmetry. I need to get this ready um, to go. So I'm just going to do that now. All right, so let's see. What have I got? Um, I'm going to just delete my working folder. And all right, so there's my helmet. And I've got the visor. Visor is pretty much good to go. I have given the visor thickness. I thought that would be better than just doing a flat plane because it will be. It's basically it's like one of those mirrors, isn't it, where you can see um, you can see out, but people can't see in because I, you never see his face through that. So I'm I'm presuming that's pretty opaque. So it looks like glass, but it's not transparent. Um, so whether I need that inner face or not, I'm not sure, but I'm keeping it anyway. Uh, let's see. We've got the back details. Now the back details are in a cloner. Obviously, you know, I can't unwrap a cloner. Um, and I mean, I probably could. I could unwrap one of these and then stick it in a cloner, but I don't want these to be all the same. So, first thing I'm going to do is just press C to make that cloner editable. And all of these are under bend, bend deformers. So let's see. Uh, my helmet, yeah, I, I ordered a helmet from um, Hasbro, but apparently it's not shipping till next April. So you probably, I'll probably end up getting a bunch of uh, Mandalorian stuff. <laughs> I've turned into a fanboy. Um, okay, so grabbing each of these, and I'll do current state to object with these. And now we've got just polygons, so. Uh, I need to give myself a bit of space, but it's so difficult on this in, at this resolution. Grab all of these, take these out. Okay, that can go now. Obviously, at this stage, you're you're truly committing. Oh, that bent deformer didn't. Um, I thought that did. Let's try this again. I'll just try one. Current state to object. Uh, no, I've got to be inside. All right, so grab these. At this stage, you're committing everything, so you need to sort of check that everything's right before you, you know, before you commit or at least save a version of this just in case. All right, so this should be number. I need to get that bender former baked in. So let's just grab this one, this one, and this one. This one and this one. Let's get these all out of there. I think there's one more. The bottom one. Okay, so get those and get rid of these. Right, so they're all separate now. So what I want to be doing is I have got a um, a weight tag on there. I can't even remember what I had that for. I think I just sharpened up some corners. I can delete those now because they're all baked in. That's good. I might just actually solo those. Got to go out of subdivision using HB Solo. Notice I haven't put a back face on them, but I have um, put a little edge on the inside that gives you that, that more rounded edge. Now these are all identical. Um, so these should be benefit from Rhizom's um, new um, topo, what's it called? Um, the new uh, topology match thing which I just had a look at this morning I need to give these a name I'm not sure what these are called um, any suggestions hey AB <laughs> I have no I call them I call them back plate
you know, if I was really anal about this, I'd probably put them in order. So that's the top one. I just call it back. Back O one. Uh, where's number three? Back O three. This is kind of um, routine, really here, doing this kind of thing. It's important to be organized. Go five and back go six. It's gonna save, because I am in R23 here. I risk, I'm risking it, working in R23 at the moment on my system. Okay, so Pfizer, back. I can get rid of the UV tag on that. Unsolo, that's good. Now the helmet itself is under symmetry. And there's also this strip that's under symmetry. What I'm gonna do, um, just save. I'm actually gonna just go into my modeling settings and turn on mesh checking, because this is one thing that, that we'd need to do as well. Uh, I wanna just see if there's any problems with the mesh. And I'm, I was pretty happy with these before. I should have checked them, but I was pretty sure that they were okay. Um, let's just solo this. Obviously, there's lots of non-planar polygons. But I'm looking for issues. There's obviously some points here that shouldn't be there. So this needs to be optimized. All of these need to be cleaned up before you unwrap. Otherwise, you're going to be bouncing backwards and forwards um, from the unwrap stage. Uh, so let's uh, come back into modeling settings. I know I'm going to have non-planar polygons, so that's just par for the cause. Uh, mesh checking. I'm going to turn off not planar polygons. And the green line is the boundary edge, so that's fine. So select the symmetry, press C. Breaking that down now. Bring that out. I'll leave that as the name strip. Get rid of any selections. Select it all. So I've got those. See, there's isolated. It says isolated points there. So I could optimize this, or I can just click select with that selected. So select those 26 isolated points and just press delete. So the modeling settings panel is really handy for cleaning up the model. Everything looks okay now. There doesn't seem to be any problems. That's ready to unwrap. Okay, save. So that's the strip done. Unsolo. I didn't update to the very latest driver. Um, there is a new one. There was a new one out yesterday, I think. Um, I'm just I'm just living dangerously. <laughs> Right, so now I'm up to, the, up to the actual helmet itself. We've got the back, back frame detail, which is this here, back detail frame. Um, I'll just select that and see if there's any problems with it. So solo, turn off this. Hopefully, I mean, look, there's a problem there. See, I haven't terminated that. So always have n-gone lines turned on as well. So under filter, just make sure you have uh, N-gon lines turned on. Obviously, the bigger the model and the more detailed the model, there's a problem there too. Look, the bigger and more detailed the model, the longer it's going to take to do this. So obviously, you want to you want to clean as you go. That's why you want to model neatly as you go. See, that's a mess. Somehow, I've pulled one of those edges out. Let's see, um, what have I done here? Yeah, I've pulled that whole face forward somehow. 
which is stupid. So let's see if I can select that. So you really need to check your model before you unwrap. What if I use MZ for a normal move and just move that back on the normals? Pretty much do something like that. And obviously that's the back of that, so, but that's better. Let's fix that now. Yeah, Tuesday the fifteenth. Yeah, I haven't haven't um, uh, tried it yet, AB. I will, but I haven't yet. Okay, so that's good. So I can now select. Let's see. Uh, turn off uh, symmetry. And sorry, I want to turn on symmetry. Now what I want to do is, I'll leave that for now, because I will collapse this symmetry down in a moment once I've checked out the actual helmet. And there's a few things going on here. Let's get rid of those. Uh, actually, we just use solo. Now when, when you have some polygons selected, solo will isolate those polygons. So just deselect those. I need to have subdivision surface turned off. So normally I wouldn't leave this many points. Um, I would have optimized to get rid of those isolated points. Once again, so select those, 107 of those. So I'll just delete them. Notice how I also deleted the inside of this as well. I didn't think there was any sense of keeping those extra polygons that you're not going to see. It's a bit janky in here because I've remember I've used the um, the brush tool just to reshape this slightly so it just fits in underneath the side detail and I pulled in the side here. But I have been able to do that without messing up any of this geometry here just by using the brush tool. Love the brush tool and the grab tool, you know, the, the sculpting tools, they're all really handy. The magnet tool. Um, I don't even know why I'm pulling that apart. It doesn't really matter. Um, so that's all good. Everything's looking good there. No problems in here. See, I've just pulled up. I pulled up a couple of faces. Um, just this one, I pulled up a little bit higher because just in case we have an angle where we just look up or, or you know, we're looking at it like this, you can actually see a little bit more of that. I didn't want to see, um, I wanted to cover the interface there. So the helmet looks good. I mean, I've been working on it long enough. <laughs> um, it should be really clean. It shouldn't have any problems. I can't see anymore. Uh, there's a little line there. Look at that. See that? That's why you want to have mesh checking turned on. So there's a problem with that. So first thing I will do is just grab those points and see if I can optimize them. Just select them and optimize. And that fixes that. So you want to pay very close attention because things like that can mess up your ability to get clean selections when you're unwrapping. I'm just saying it from experience. There's that line there is from in there. That's fine. I think it's okay. Let's just get rid of that strip. I'm just looking at it, um, one side of it for now because if this is right, then when I collapse the symmetry down, it'll be fine on the other side. That looks good. Okay, so turn that back on. So looks good. We've got lovely um, smooth helmet because of that shrink wrap. Turn that back on. Okay, press C to collapse that down. There's my 
back frame detail and my helmet. Get rid of all this rubbish. Looking good. I'll call this helmet. Um, I'll call this back frame. So helmet will go um, at the top, visor underneath, strip will go above helmet, uh, back frame will go above those. There is something going on there, look at that, something I missed. Solo. Uh, that's because um, those points were overlapping when it was under symmetry. So I'll just grab those two points, MQ, and just weld those together. Okay, cool. Looking good. I think that's it. What have I got in these? Oh, that's just an empty one. What's in this one? Bull symmetry. I don't even know what that is. Got no idea what that is. Ah, oh, that's the side bits. Isn't that stupid? Of course. Wouldn't be much of a Mandalorian helmet without those. So these ones will be um, identical, obviously, because they're under symmetry. So it's just solo. Now this area, this area isn't visible. Um, I could probably just select this like that we'll just turn everything else back on just to make sure so will that be visible at all no not at all actually a lot of it won't be visible So I can probably press UY just to expand that selection. UY a few times. Let's see. UY. And now, now I'm actually going to remove some of the stuff I don't want. So UK to take that back. I might just take it back one more. UK. And just get rid of those. I can leave that face open. Do I want to leave that open? Uh, I might just close it actually, just in case. Turn off mesh checking. Select one and then shift control, select the other. MP, stitch and sew. Hold down shift to close that up. I'm going to select and see if that's done what I wanted it to do. Yeah, and a reason that's not working exactly as I expected is because I've got to put these edges in. So I'm just going to go into point mode, snap, snap. They're not welded. So I'll just, you can see when they're not welded, there's actually a little black dot. I don't even know if I ever noticed that before, whether that's new, <laughs> but I just started noticing it the other day. Um, select those, optimize, weld those together. Same for these. Optimize. I'm not sure if there's an optimize function in Blender. I have to, I'll have to check that out. I'm not up to that yet. I'm still watching tutorials. It's going to take me a while to start integrating stuff into Blender. I'm so used to Cinema 4D. I looked at the new cloth brush the other day, though, the sculpting cloth brush. That's pretty sweet.
Okay, so... Um, now, I realize that is overlapping there somewhat because taking this face out here sort of sort of splayed this out a little bit, but I'm okay with that. So that piece is done. I think we're okay there. We can probably get rid of a few of those loops. Always try to optimize it as much as possible. Get rid of the things you don't need. MN. MN. Might just solo that to check that I'm not messing it up. Yeah, see, I took out one there and that removed one that I needed. So let's just undo that. Sometimes I say to myself, no, nah, it'll be okay. I don't need to check. <laughs> but I can just leave it hidden. It'll be okay. Undo a few times. There we go. So if I just go like that and like this, this would have been better to be done under symmetry. Take that one like that. And get rid of those. can probably, let's see, ME, polygon pen, snap that across to there. Dissolve that one, that's better. That's a much more graceful way to do those. Should have done it in symmetry, of course, so I should have checked that. So I can't loop select I can't do a loop cut through there because of those end gons. Um, so KK uncheck visible only and just force it in there. Like that. And before I do anything else, just recheck visible only. Otherwise, I'm going to be cutting into my model in areas that I don't expect, which is something I often do and I will continue to do. Get rid of these. This is, I mean, I don't have to do this because this is not visible much anyway. So Q to go back into subdivision surface. That's looking good. I don't know what this looks like on the inside of the actual helmet. Who knows? I mean, I haven't got the helmet, but I just I just added this extrusion here just to fill the gap. Let me turn this on. You can see there was a bit of a gap in there. I just wanted to add a little bit of detail in there. Otherwise, there's a big hole there. Uh, yeah, good. I good good question, Evan. Let me tell you why I didn't do that. That's a good question. Uh, so Evan asked, why not just close polygon hole or use a bridge. So let's come back to here. Let's just delete that. I'll just save this for now. I'm gonna I'm gonna undo this. Okay so close polygon hole MD works. Um, well doesn't work. See? That's why I don't use close polygon hole. <laughs> I was going to say it'll work, but it'll give you n-gons, which you then have to, you know, convert. So you could do that. Um, bridge. Um, you know, I, I think you can do them more than one at a time, but, you know, a bit slow. So stitch and sew, MP, hold down shift, and just make sure you've got the right area. And you're done. That's why I use Stitch and Sew. Okay. But obviously you can do the same thing with different tools. Okay, that's that one done. Um, I'll call this um, 
what is this earpiece? Any idea what this what this would be called? Um, uh, I can never even think of names for these things. Uh, side gizmo. I don't know. Um, let's just uh, call it. Um, Earbridge. Ah, we got a Star Wars fan. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say side, side bit one. <laughs> that sounds more Star Warsy. And that's the wrong one. So that's the yeah, side bit one. Okay. So this is side bit two. Side bit two. Now this is be, by the way, this is going to take this takes longer than it does to actually unwrap the bloody thing. Um, side bit three. Although I am a bit rusty in Ryzen. Okay, so side bit two. This is actually all one piece. I think. Um, although this piece here does have a separate material. You can see if I press UW and select select connected, it is part of this one piece of geometry, but it is um, it is not connected. See, it's disconnected. I could have this as a separate piece of geometry. Um, wonder if I should. Might make it easier to select. Yeah, I'll just go. Pre I'll press UP just to split that off, and then just delete the original. Oops. Delete the original, and there we go. So that's side bit two. So this is side bit two A. That's good. So all I'm looking for here is just to see that it's all nice and neat. Select all of these. Have I got mesh checking turned on? Make sure that's turned on. Now, who, who saw the triangle? Anyone see the big fat triangle I've got? Right there. And there's absolutely no reason why I wouldn't want a triangle there. So anyone who tells you you can never have triangles, uh, it's, it's just dead wrong. Um, just checking the geometry, seeing if there's any way I need to optimize it. Um, I didn't really like that it sort of, sort of pinching around this area here. So I did pull out um, a couple of these edges just to try and soften that. Um, but it is, I've, I've checked out the actual helmet as much as I can in the show and on images. And this, it does pinch a little bit. This is a fairly sharp, this line. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's okay. I think that's looking all good. I think it's fine. This is not not beautiful there, but um, I think that'll do. Look at the slide tool. Slide tool when snapping's turned on just goes mental. And even even this, I'm trying to drag that down, right? I'm trying to drag this down, and it wants to go up. Try to drag it. Up wants to go down. It, 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 I don't know about you. What about you, sir? Does the slide tool drive you mental? So now that now that works. I don't know whether that's something I'm doing wrong, um, but it doesn't work as expected. Okay. All good. I'm sorry I didn't actually record me modeling this part, but it was a pain in the ass to do this stuff. And um, I just wanted to get out of the way last week. Yeah, that's 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 okay, Duvenel. Um, 
if you're a beginner, a lot of this will go over your head, I think. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, Evan. So you tried and failed and failed miserably. Yeah, I can understand that. It takes a bit of practice. Why do you think I'm doing this? I'm practicing. An N-gon was anything without four sides. Well, an N-gon's a five-sided polygon. A triangle's three-sided and a quad is four-sided. Triangle's not causing issues here because it's on a flat surface. It's on a flat surface. It's not bending over any edges. And keep in mind that, and also that this is going to be subdivided. So as soon as this is subdivided, this triangle is no longer a triangle. It becomes quads. So I think it's the same. It's the same old adage, right? It's know the rules and know when you can break them, right? Okay. So things like this here, um, just out of interest, I'm just going to take these. These weren't, you know, modeled in um, when I was creating this uh, geometry. But uh, you, you don't want to leave these big, long polygons um, because you can see how when I subdivide that, see how that pulls that sharpening edge all the way down? And this is to do with tension, and this is covered by Toby in Making It Look Grade 11. There's a whole chapter um, about subdivision tension. Um, and what what will happen is when you're... Um, in Substance Painter, or where, when, you're sub, when you're texturing it, your material, um, your texture will get stretched and it won't sit correctly. So you really need to um, do something like a ring select and you can use MM to um, uh, connect edges or you can just use, um, let me just get rid of this dock, uh, taskbar. Or you can use Edge Cut and just, you know, Get them in there, about as square as possible. And now when I subdivide that, you can see that sits much closer. So the texture is going to be correct. So you don't want to have those long areas, um, those long polygons. Try to keep things as square as possible. Um, I will just come in with the slide tool. Also talking about, um, um, what was I talking about? Tension. You can see how the actual unsubdivided mesh is sitting away from the subdivided mesh and this is this is in uneven tension one way to fix this is to relax the mesh um, another way is just to slide the points and get them a little closer I'm not going to get them right on and when I say relax I'm talking about you know, taking those points and using something like HB Relax and just relaxing those in. See that? And now I could do that, do that again like that. Point mode. And they're going to be a little more relaxed now and they're going to sit correctly. Okay, so what else? I've got these edges coming up here, which I need to sharpen up down here, but I don't need them all up here. So I can just very quickly, a um, couple of ways I could do this. One way is just to add a loop in here. Do I want to do that? Um, yeah, just add a loop in there. Do I need to do this? Not necessarily. These sort of things become more important when there's something up this in this area of the model that is being destroyed by having these edges running through it. So I try and I try and limit the amount of uh, loops that I have running through my model. Like that. That's a sort of more graceful way to do that. Although that is sort of uneven around here. Um, what I can do is UB, select that, 
and I wonder if I could select that. Is that going to do some weird stuff? Let's just turn this off. Cursor 1 and 2A. Get rid of those. Don't want to have those in there. Select that. And that. And I can see a problem there. Look at that guy. Woo! What's that doing down there? I'm going to save that selection just for a moment. So I'll set selection. Uh, where is it? Over here. Got it in my most used tools. See you, Duvenel. Yeah, totally, Serge. Only when you really need it, right? Um, but sometimes you just, you really need it. Now, I've obviously grabbed a point here and sort of messed that up. And this, this can be a bit of a pain because um, if I just delete that point, let's just bring that up. There it is there. It's just like it's gone mental. Um, lining it up again can be a bit of a pain. Sometimes it's good to come into alternative views. Maybe turn on snapping and just snap it up in there. That's <laughs> not quite right. Okay, let's just bring that up. So, got world on. Let's go uh, run normal. Let's go into axis. All right, how could we line this up? This is actually quite a good little, um, good little exercise. Um, let's see if we can use dynamic snapping. Let's try this. Okay, check this out. See if this works. So I'll turn on. Um, guide snap and dynamic guides is on okay and I've got perpendicular snap turned on by default I'll hold down shift because I'm going to turn on point snapping as well something I learned from uh, Kiwi see oh, what's 3d Kiwi um, a while back so you can see how with, with dynamic snapping I've got a little green cross there so what I want to do is grab the move tool and I want to grab that point. This feels a bit weird. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to snap it to that point. And I'm going to see it leaves a green arrow, a green cross. Snap it to that point. Snap it to that point. Leaves another green cross. And then I can slide it and I can intersect those two. See that? Yeah, baby. That's dynamic snapping. And snapping is not something a lot of people will use in Cinema 4D with the guides, guide snapping. But that is a sexy little way to do that. Really sweet. And turn that off. I love it when you don't have to sort of like, you know, um, eyeball these kinds of things. You can never get them quite right. You know when you're snapping it that it's right. Okay, so I'm going to come back and grab my selection. Edge mode. Oh, we've, we've, we've already got it, actually. <laughs> we've already got it. I can hardly talk. Take that one off. I just want to even these out a little bit. So I'm just going to use HB even distribution, which is that one there, and just evenly distribute those. See how that pushes that into the middle? That's good. Save, Q. Does it look okay? Doesn't seem to be any problems with that now. Render. Okay, looking good. So that bit's done. And if I, by the way, if I wanted to, I could go ME. And I could do that too.
if I wanted to. And I do, so I'll just get rid of these. And now I've got that. Looking good. Okay, it's done. Uh, only one more bit to do. Yeah, that tool is from HB Modeling Bundle. If you're using Cinema 4D, then I think um, you really need HB Modeling Bundle. Um, you broke Ryzen UV, huh? Just froze. Apparently, I have to kill it through the task manager. Oh, wow. The unfold brush. I haven't used the unfold brush. You're probably doing a lot more in Ryzen than I am, Serge. I should get you to show um, people how to use that. Okay. How are we going for time? 11.20, wow. Takes a bit of while, a while to um, clean up a model. Okay, this bit is the last bit. We might not even get to Ryzen today. I might just leave that for the next live stream. Might do that tomorrow morning, actually. Do it tomorrow. Um, but we will we will take it across, and I'll show you how easy that is. Um, okay, so quickly checking this one out. Going to see if there's any issues. I've got mesh checking turned on. This was fiddly doing this piece. This kind of these kind of edges where you've got to sharpen in here and carry that across to sharpen over here. These kind of objects under subdivision. I mean, they look great, but they can be really fiddly. Yeah, we've got Rising UV in the house. All right. Love Rising UV. I feel, I feel like I'm going to be a bit underwhelming showing people how I use it. <laughs> Um, okay, I reckon that piece is pretty good. I don't see any issues in there. This is all one piece in here. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Is this bit connected? I don't think it is. U, W. Yeah, same as the other thing. This is, it's all one object, but this is actually disconnected. So I need to ask myself again, do I need to have some of these back faces? I think I probably do. It might, might be just as well to leave those. Or maybe, can I get rid of, um, can I get rid of some of this? Get rid of that. She's not going to see that. It's well hidden. Um, don't want to go to any further than that. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to take it in Substance Painter. That's my, that's my tool. <laughs> okay. All right, I reckon we're ready to go. So I'm going to put that back under Symmetry. And this is actually one of the good things about Rhizom is because we've got identical geometry here. So we'll be able to very quickly handle that in Rhizom. So that's all good. Um, let's go. Um, okay. This is, what I want to do here is a, is a quick way to do this. If I if I collapse this down now, I'm going to have to select points and split them off. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate the symmetry. Turn one off. Um, I'll collapse that down. And you can see it's given me two. Okay. No, I don't need to. Do, I don't need to do that actually. Um, I will take this out of symmetry, get rid of that, all right, see that's on that side, turn that off, turn symmetry back on, and I'll flip the object. So here I will, under symmetry, I will flip, then I'll take this one out of symmetry, and that gives me the other side. Yay, learned that tip fairly recently. So I've got side one and side two. So I've got um, side bit, we better name these. 
so that's the right hand side that's the left hand side so we'll go side bit one Should we say side bit one left or left side bit one? I think I'll go side bit one left. Side bit two, my model, so I can name it how I want. I had a look at a lot of different helmets when I was exploring doing this, and there's a lot of dodgy ones online. I mean, no offense to people who do them, but there's all different kinds of levels of detail. No, oh, that's not left, it's right. So what am I doing? That one's got to be right. Pay attention. So we're almost ready to take this across. Right. Right. And I will take these out of the groups as well. Okay, so get rid of that, get rid of that. You can see how far we've come with actually cleaning up the model. I'm going to get rid of these. Now the tags, I don't have to get rid of the tags because Ryzen will give me new UV tags. Uh, one thing I do want to do uh, is take them out of the null. And Turn off mesh checking. Um, I, I mean, from a distance, it looks fantastic, man. Your model looks unbelievable. I haven't seen the actual, um, if you're talking actually as a modeler to a modeler on the actual wireframe, I haven't seen your wireframe. So, but from, from the, actual, the actual model itself looks amazing. I mean, from a distance. But if you're talking topology, I don't know. I haven't seen it. So that's good. I reckon he's looking pretty good. Obviously, it would be a very uncomfortable helmet without all the detail inside. Um, let's see. One thing I want to do is select everything. Um, and this is something that Serge actually reminded me of doing fairly recently. Um, let's see. We want to... Uh, what do we want to do? We want to... Um, unbreak Fong shading. Now, try that again. Because I do tend to get a few issues in Substance Painter if I haven't done that. I think everything's okay. I don't think there was any actual issues with it. Yep, okay. And my fongs are all set to 40. Um, what I might do is select all of them. Now there is a tool for this in HB Modeling Bundle. Uh, uh, HB Set Fong. So I can just do them all at once. So I'm going to set them to 80. And click OK. So they should be all on 80 now. That's right. Okay. So, just once more, I'm actually just going to save this. Take everything out of um, layers. No, I'll do that later, it's fine. Um, group. I will be using Redshift for this, so I'll be using Tessellation in Redshift, but I'm just going to do this and render. Looks pretty good. I don't see any shading errors. So it's ready to go. So I'm going to undo that. Grab these. 
Now, I do have to ask myself, do I want to add materials to this um, first? I mean, the helmet doesn't have a lot of separate materials. Um, the reason I'm thinking about it now is because I can use um, I can use multi-tile in Rhizome and distribute objects based on their material. Um, and I can do it manually as well. If I've got something like a car or a motorbike, of course, then you really want to be doing that because it can save a lot of time. Um, but I just wonder whether I need to. I might, um, I might just use a couple of materials. They're handy to have them. So I'll grab all of these bits. Can I grab? Put it on all of those at once. I've got something selected. Uh, there we go. So these could be handy to have on a separate tile. I want to have this fairly high um, texel density. The helmet itself will probably have to be split across a couple of tiles. And I can hide the seam underneath this, um, this strip. Uh, the visor could have a separate material. And maybe the back detail could have a separate material. Let's quickly drag this on. Now I know you can actually do new material IDs in the latest version of Ryzen UV. Um, I don't really use material ID in Substance Painter. This, I tend to do this. I read the instructions uh, or the new the new um, new feature information, and it said that you know having a material ID directly in Rhizome is handy if you haven't actually used your own materials. Um, I think the helmet itself and this strip and this back area all can have um, the same material. So let's make this red or oh, hot pink. Okay. So I'll just give these names. Helmet. Um, back detail. And what's the green one? Um, what do I actually do? The visor. Visor. And side bits. 